All right, let's start chapter 13. Uh, the first thing we're going to look in chapter 13 is looking at the categories of life, uh, essentially looking at by energy source. Uh, so the first uh, group of organisms are known as heterotrophs. Uh, and these are organisms that obtain energy from other organisms. All right, so uh, if we look at heterotrophs, and I don't think I have a picture of this, I don't, so let's just go back to here. Uh, uh, heterotroph, uh, so when you look at the different kinds of heterotrophs, uh, one type is a consumer. And these are organisms that obtain energy by eating other organisms. And so uh, animals, you know, like us, we are consumers, we ingest things. Next are decomposers. And this is an organism that absorbs nutrients from other organisms, uh, like a fungus does. So it literally grows into the substrate of, of that organism and then absorbs the nutrients that way. Last are detritivores. And these are organisms that obtain energy from, um, uh, by feeding on the uh, dead organisms. Uh, so uh, like a vulture, um, but this could be uh, a fungus as well. All right. The other major group of organisms are producers, also known as autotrophs. Uh, auto means self, troph means feed. Uh, so these are self-feeding organisms. So these are organisms that extract energy from the non-living environment. Uh, so one type is a photoautotroph. And these are organisms that derive their energy from the sun. And so uh, they do this by photosynthesis. So those are plants and algae. And the other group are called chemoautotrophs. And these are organisms that obtain energy by oxidizing chemicals. Uh, and so these are, they do this through this process called chemosynthesis. Now these are little microbes, uh, either bacteria or archaea, uh, and they are gonna break down inorganic chemicals. And by doing so, this releases the energy for them to make organic compounds. Uh, so in photosynthesis, you use, use light energy to put energy into molecules. In chemosynthesis, you take that energy from those inorganic substances. All right, now let's look at the major categories of life. So this is looking at a phylogeny showing bacteria, archaea, and then the eukarya. So those are the three major domains of life. So let's take a look at bacteria. Uh, there are several kingdoms to bacteria. Um, <coughs> one of the things about bacteria is they are all single-celled organisms, all right? Uh, and they are prokaryotic cells uh, in that they lack, all right? These are cells that lack a nucleus. And they're literally everywhere. Uh, and this is showing uh, bacteria that's on a toothbrush bristle, all right? All right. Uh, so one of the ways that we classify uh, bacteria uh, is by their shape. So this is showing the three major shapes or by their genetic sequence, all right? Uh, bacteria can be uh, autotrophs, being either a photoautotroph or a chemoautotroph, uh, or they can be heterotrophic, like the bacteria that live in us are heterotrophic. And oh yeah, by the way, uh, you're outnumbered, uh, even in your own body, uh, by bacterial cells. It's just that our cells are much, much larger than bacterial cells. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at uh, um, the next domain, and this is archaea. And once again, archaea, there are several kingdoms to archaea. And in general, they can be uh, single-celled organisms, um, well, that's all they are, single-celled organisms. Uh, they are also prokaryotes. Uh, they can also be autotrophs, either um, uh, a chemoautotroph or a photoautotroph, or they can be heterotrophic as well. So they have a lot of similarities to bacteria. So this is showing some bacteria, this is showing some archaea. They're gonna look superficially similar, but there's major differences in their DNA and their RNA. And actually, uh, they both have cell walls, but their cell walls are made out of different things. All right, uh, do, uh, archaea generally live in extreme conditions, and a lot of times we refer them to as extremophiles. Essentially, the bacteria have outcompeted them, uh, and so they get pushed off to these marginal areas. All right, so let's take a look at some habitats uh, in which organisms can live. Now, I do want to point out with these habitats, we can also find these bacteria in these areas as well. So the first is an acidophile, and this is an organism that lives in extremely acidic environments. So this isn't shown one of them here, but uh, uh, so our stomach has a pH of one to two, uh, and you can actually find a, a species of bacteria that lives there, and that's called Helobacter pylori. And those are the bacteria that actually cause ulcers. Uh, next are halophiles. Uh, halophiles uh, is an organism that tolerates extremely salty surroundings. 
Uh, and so here I'm not just talking about bacteria or archaea that might live in the ocean, uh, but in much more uh, salty uh, environments uh, like the Dead Sea or Salt Lake. Uh, next are thermophiles, and thermophiles is an organism that lives under conditions of high heat. So you can see like in this hot spring, there's organisms that live there. Here's also showing another hot spring. There's that coloration that you see is due to microorganisms living there. Next is a group called methanogens. Uh, and these are organisms that produce methane as a byproduct of their metabolism. Uh, so uh, this isn't really a habitat. I just didn't know where else to put these guys. So um, if you drive by the landfill there on, um, uh, 55 and 203 right by the raceway if you drive by there late at night you might notice there you're gonna see these pipes coming out of the landfill and then there's a blue flame at the top of those pipes uh, and that's because there are methanogens that are living in um, the garbage dump they're eating our garbage and they're producing methane gas as a byproduct now we got to pump that gas out otherwise that uh, landfill could explode due to that methane gas and then we just burn it off uh, after it's piped out now, uh, also some uh, organisms can tolerate extremely high pressures. So these are organisms that live on the bottom of the ocean. All right, let's look at uh, domain uh, archaea. So, uh, ar uh, I'm sorry, yeah, so domain eukarya, sorry. Uh, domain eukarya, these can be single-celled or multicellular organisms. Uh, and they're eukaryotic, so these are cells that have a nucleus. So uh, looking at this group, Right, so the first group are the uh, protists. So uh, this isn't a, a kingdom, there are many kingdoms here. The commonality that all protists have is that they are all single cell. Now you can find plant-like uh, uh, protists, like kelp. Uh, you can find animal-like protists, like an amoeba, and it moves, right? Uh, and you can find fungal-like protists, uh, these things called slime molds, uh, single-celled colonial organisms. All right. Next is uh, kingdom fungi. Uh, these are the yeast, molds, and mushrooms. Uh, they are mostly multicellular. This is just showing a mushroom here. Uh, yeasts are single-celled organisms. Uh, these guys are heterotrophic in that they are decomposers. Next is kingdom plantae, uh, the plants. Uh, these guys are also, multi also multicellular, uh, and they are uh, mostly autotrophic. Um, through being photoautotrophs. Uh, there are a few, like uh, the Venus flytrap, uh, which uh, can be heterotrophic. Uh, next is uh, Kingdom Animalia, uh, the animals. Uh, once again, they're multicellular. Uh, they are heterotrophs, uh, mainly by being consumers. 